Radio Times travels to a corner of Africa to meet an English woman abroad. Sylvia Richardson has been gently teased out of private exile for 40 minutes of self-revelation. And I've been in Kenya for 40 years this time, and I was here before that. I've never become a Kenya citizen, I'm a British citizen. Memories are also on the menu as Esther Ranson shares lunch and a few sweet recollections with the Radio Times. There's a rather beautiful handle on it, too. That means that you must play bar. No, I was going to play handles for music. <laughs> Good evening. And that's entertainment as the Radio Times quizzes Tom O'Connor, Ken Dodd and Larry Grayson about their roles in a new sparkling showbiz quiz show, A Question of Entertainment. There's entertainment and a little disorder on the back pages of the Radio Times as Saturday morning television goes on the waterfront. Kate, will you stop tickling my leg? I am not tickling my leg. Look, will you behave yourselves or we'll never get the front cover of the Radio Times? No, because the front cover of the new Radio Times is where you'll find Esther Ranson and that's life. <laughs>... has questioned her minister's latest advice to the poor. It appears in this leaflet and it advises claimants not to shop when they're hungry in case they spend more and to try putting a blanket or even tin foil over their mattress in order to keep warm. As the new social security rules take effect, we're asking, is this good advice or more misery for the poor? Is it good advice, do you think? No, I think it's absolutely shameful in 1988 that <coughs> we're asking people to keep warm by putting tinfoil under their beds. But it's one level where you could say, I suppose, that's reasonable. That's actually telling people how they can look after themselves and economise. Well, I think it's rather surprising, given that the government has uh, sold all this new benefit system on the basis that people are going to be better off, that they now feel it necessary to tell people to take measures such as this, mm. which has never happened in the past. Mm -hmm. What do other people feel about this advice that is being given here? The government telling the poor, what are these actually, what? Absolutely, absolutely squalid and sordid and typical, I think, of the most squalid, sordid government we've had in this country since the war. Utterly appalling. What is it you object to specifically? I think they're a pack of liars and thieves. <laughs> that's not specific. Uh, that's not specific. I say, I say, I say that's, that's not specific, that's pretty general. Pretty general the advice. pretty accurate, believe the me. The advice. Well, I feel it's obscene, this statement. We live in a so-called highly civilised, developed, wealthy country. We have vast resources of coal and oil and gas. And we're treating the sex in the community this way. That's yeah, obscene. <laughs> Do you, Martin? I agree with the general view. I mean, it, it really does make one rather cringe. The only thing I would say is that in the old days, as it were, when people used to fend for themselves with their own money. People could actually take pride in seeing how far a little bit of money could go. And they take pride in the way they economised and the way they knew how to do things. Now, it's the fact that it's state welfare that gives it such a terrible taste in the mouth. And I think it does just point out to some of the kind of problems we're facing with welfare. It is degrading. Welfare is not degrading. It's, it is the way that people who are in circumstances often which they're not able to control can, can survive and pull themselves out of it. Nobody really wants to live in a state of poverty or dependency, but, but people have to have the, 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 the essential um, elements in life in order to try to pull themselves out of it and there's no and and talking about uh, uh, welfare it sounds horribly American to me and in fact this is not the way I like to see my country run by a squad Do you like to see your, your country run like this David? I think that that piece of advice which as I understand it was a draft piece of advice that was put around without consulting ministers was a mistake but I think that People are talking as if we don't still have a welfare state. People are forgetting but, 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 that we're still. On, people are but, forgetting that we're still spending thousands of millions of pounds every year. But on don't, you, don't you think? Well, that, that, that's that's true, of course. But isn't it also, David, slightly kind of contemptuous of the of the poor? 
to give them this kind of advice. To talk, for example, to suggest that you should confine your heating to a small area, i.e. a living room, which, you know, has a kind of notion of everybody huddling up in front of the fire as you had to do years and years ago. That, that, is, those, is, isn't that those the sort of uh, regulations we had in the old-style old detailed calculations of your heating additions which have been removed as part of the attempt to simplify the system. It was precisely that sort of detailed questioning into how many, how many rooms you needed to heat that the old heating additions and single payments required. But, but leaving that, I mean, all this, looking at the tips on fuel economy, looking at how it tells people to shop, there's two things that strike me. One is that it's very patronising to tell people to keep a lid on the saucepan when they're cooking. I agree with or, you. I, uh, I, I agree with you that it sounds patronising. Or turn to heat enough to simmer only, or use one pot to cook a number of vegetables and switch off cooker rings just before cooking is finished. But, 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 but also, and don't shop when hungry, I mean, that's a terror. But also, it's just things like what you're spending on sweets, cakes, biscuits, pud puddings, jams, all these give you little nutritional value. Don't you have jam well, and puddings I think and that sweets? I, I think that it's easy to mock that sort of thing, and I agree with you that it's distasteful. But the one thing I would add is it was probably well-intentioned. It was actually intended to help. Tell me something. What did Mrs. Thatcher, what has she done with the two billion she saved on the budget last year? Yeah, what has she done with that? Give it to a third world country, more than likely. Charity begins at home. The, the total social security budget is going up towards 50,000 million pounds a year. The overseas, the over, well, I was asked a question about figures. It's fair to re reply in terms of figures. The overseas aid budget is something like 1,000 million pounds a year and rising. A lot of people say that we ought to spend more on overseas aid. Do they? Doran, you, like we've got one example here, haven't we, Doran? You were on the, this programme. Linda, yes. Uh, sorry, Linda. <laughs> Doran is your son. He is indeed. Um, several weeks ago when we talked about him and how you've helped him overcome his handicap. Now, you've had, or you were threatened with the removal of your benefit, the benefit that you received from. Can you tell me briefly what happened to you? I have two community service volunteers who have for years now been helping on a highly successful rehabilitation program for Doran. They've saved the state and we've saved the state hundreds yes. of thousands of pounds. Yeah. Now, government departments don't refer to one another. The Social Security is not interested in the hundreds of thousands of pounds I've mm. saved the education service or the health but what service. what happened? <laughs> I went on to the BBC Sussex Radio talking about my <coughs> book, The Other Child, which describes how my daughter helped my son and how well my son is doing. A social security officer came to my house. He behaved extremely intimidatingly, but said he was only filling in a routine form. When he had gone, he had left his notes. In the notes, it said that uh, an official on holiday had listened to this program, and that since Doran was doing so well, and since my daughter was now helping and had provided <coughs> so much motivation, and since I'd found the time to write two books in five years, the second book uh, of which I, I declare my royalties, and they're docketed for my social security, which they know, and the first book is in, in a trust right. which pays my son's education. But you education. were going to lose your... Yes, that they, I was going to lose my... Well, it didn't tell me precisely that I was going to lose my benefit immediately. The following Monday, I received a brief note telling me to return my book, my full benefit, not only the allowance for my volunteers, all Doran's allowances and, and my allowance. So I was left with no money for a, a week, with two volunteers to, to pay, my two children to pay, and myself, and no money whatsoever. David, uh, Professor, is that the kind of society we want to create where... Civil servants, listening to the radio, hear what someone say, go round, knock on their door, remove their benefits while their case is looked at? No, of course it's not, but nor is that a fair question. You've got a big... W well, I think... It well, is it's a fair question. question. It's what happened. It's what happened. If it's if what I happened. happened. Can, can I have a go? Of course you can have a go. But you can't tell me it's not a fair question, because then I'll, I'll, have a go. I'll start by saying sure. it's not a fair question. It's not a fair question, because if you're going to have a big welfare state, if all these people are going to sing out in favour of it, if it's going to expand even under a government which is allegedly trying to help people back towards <laughs> self-reliance, <laughs> then you'll get mistakes like this. You'll have a machine like this. It shouldn't be there and it shouldn't happen. On the other hand, I wouldn't be as apologetic about the other thing. We, we need good advice to people. Good advice. You're on a good income. I'd like to know what it is, because I bet you live a downside better than half these people here. 
This may well be. I've not come to defend my position in that sense at all. I've no, been asked... No, you're comfortably off and you grumble about the likes of us the... having to live on the state. I'm not grumbling no, no, no. at all. There are people around here with incomes similar and more than mine who'll take your argument. It's not an argument well, about look at people rules. with let's different wealth. It's rules. an argument it's... about arguments. Right. Well, the government, the government clearly does see that there, uh, uh, there are problems, there are difficulties, defects as they see it in the present system. Tell me, David, what are the aims of the change, the fundamental change that is now occurring in the social security system? I think there were several objectives. One objective was to make the system simpler because we were already always being told that it was too complicated and you had the different tests of income for getting housing benefit, for getting family income supplement, for getting supplementary benefit. Those tests have been aligned. The aim was also to get rid of the worst effects of what was called the poverty trap and the unemployment trap when people could, as a result of losing benefits and paying more tax, be worse off as their income rose. That was ludicrous. The aim was to make people better off, always better off in work than out of work. And the aim was to give more incentives for people to take out second pensions on top of the basic state retirement pension so they'd be better off in their old age. How many, lo how many losers are there as a result of this restructuring? The calculation of nobody knows how many losers there are exactly. No, nobody knows. Nobody knows for the straightforward reason that. But the DHSS has an estimate. The DHSS it? makes a variety of guesses, and what we'll What's end up. Best one? What's the best, best one? The best guess is that most people will end up after these benefit changes with levels of benefit very similar to what they are getting beforehand. Most people meaning 57 percent. 88 88 percent of people will have the same benefit in cash terms or more. Let's, we're going to argue about that. I want the losers. Who are those who are going to lose by the present system, by the changes? Two weeks ago, we had a rather nasty surprise. Our rent went up by £9.49. Last week, we had an increase in pension of £2.76, which leaves us worse off by £6.93. This is the two of you? This and is the two of us, yes. Yeah. You can't claim supplementary because I'm £1.40 over the limit. £1.40 over, that's right. Apart from that, we have no savings whatsoever, no fault of our own. Our house burnt down just before he retired. We'd let the insurance run out because we knew we were selling that and moving into another one and it was leasehold with nothing. So we had to take all our savings, which left us nothing. When your government says that we can have tax interest free and all the other things that go with it, we can't have you nothing because we've got just our bare pensions. And as my husband's just said, we're that six pounds something worse off if we want glasses, teeth, bus fares to hospitals. We don't. And let me tell you, my husband's registered disabled with emphysema of the lungs. And because they found out 10 days afterwards, he doesn't even get a disability pension like most people do that are disabled. Work that one out for me because I'm sure I can't work it out. Can you work it out, David? I, you can't. You, you can't. If you're going to have a welfare state, as Professor Marsden was saying earlier, if you're going to have a welfare state, it's going to operate by a variety of rules and regulations. That is how the state operates. There's no way around it. Whenever you have a system of rules and regulations, there are going to be hard cases which fall on just the wrong side of those rules and regulations. That, that is... Want, you, I, hang on, I'm it on, is on the wrong side, David. Yeah, well, yeah, good, David. Well, if you, if, should it we will, if we put up, if we put up the, the supplementary bin, benefit limit by two pounds to bring you just inside it, we'll then have another case on a program like this in a month's time of somebody who's two, who's one pounds forty just outside that limit. It, it, what you're complaining about is the existence of these regulations and rules. And the fact is that when it's a matter of spending public money voted by Parliament, that's how Parliament works. I'm one of the people. I'm one of the people who have lost. Now, Catherine, I'm Catherine, I'm Catherine. Um, prior to the benefit changes, I was getting £72.23 per week. I'm now getting £74.78 pence. I'm sorry, £122.73 pence per week. Prior to the benefit changes, it's now £124.78 pence per week. But because of the changes in the rates and the amount of rates to be paid and housing benefit, I am now £6.95 per week worse off. The government says I should stand on my own two feet would love the opportunity to stand on my own two feet, but your government fails to put into effect <coughs> legislation, which means that employers have to employ disabled people. No, I'm quite capable away. of doing work, but no one is prepared away. to employ them. Because I can't make I am a loser, yes. Tell me what you're losing, love. 
Before the changes, I was getting £91 and uh, threepence per week. I'm now getting £93 and two pence, I think it is. But the day after that I had that increase, I had my bill for housing benefit for £15, which I've got to pay every month. So therefore, I'm losing a five, roughly <coughs> £5 a week. Yeah, I'm very interested what the minister said because he no, just. He's not. He's not. Oh, okay. no, he's not okay. a minister. Okay. Not, yet. not yet. There's, not yet. there's no. a minister. But what I want, to, church, what yeah. I want to know, what I'm, what I'm looking I'm for now, is somebody who's the right. Tell me to why minister, and right? then how, how right. much. He just said there's an incentive for people to work, right? Unfortunately, that is not true. I'm at work, but I've, I'm unfortunately on the low income, so I have to claim housing benefit. And you and know this new, this new full-time work. You're married. Oh, I'm married with three children. The ages of the children. Um, just quickly, can 12, you 12, 8 and two. Right. Okay, and um, the be benefit changes are supposed to be helping me. And in fact, I'm seven pound a week worse off. I was bringing in all the benefits, and my wage is 136, and now I'm 129. So I've actually lost seven pound. But on top of that, which makes it even worse for me, if I want to work a bit of overtime or I get a pay rise, which has actually happened to me, my benefits go sliding down and I'm almost, I might as well be taxed at 70p in the pound. I'm losing. Chris, there's several cases here. Pensioners, people are disabled, low paid, wanting to work, at work. Are these what? typical of want to work? Yeah. I want uh, to work, that's why I'm there. Right. I was, on the, doll for, sorry, so I was okay. on the doll for two years and I hated it. And I took a job Good where my you. where my wages, my take home pay was less than what I had on the dole. But what well, about so, Chris, are these mm. cases typical, or, well, or, are, or are they exceptional? No, I mean I think if we were to believe the government and David Willits, in terms of the number of people who've lost through the changes, all of them must be in this studio this morning, because the government claims that very few people have lost. Mm. David Willits <coughs> wouldn't answer your question. He knows very well the government itself estimates that about four million people will be worse off as a result of the, of the changes than if the system had remained as it was. It may be 57% uh, worse off, it may be 12% worse off. The fact is that in a prosperous society like ours, mm -hmm. no one on these levels of income should be worse off, especially when the government has just given £2,000 million away in tax cuts to the very richest yeah. 3%. And that's what If we have a well-designed and efficient benefit system, it should be possible by spending 50,000 million pounds, that's one pound for every 10 pound that we as a nation produce, to alleviate all the worst problems of poverty. I mean, the amount of money that we spend on Social Security carries on rising. It's been rising decade after decade. More people are unemployed, yeah. 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 you don't yeah. understand that. More people are unemployed, there are more pensioners, of course we're spending more on Social Security. But it's, it's, it's risen, no, but it's risen not just for that reason, it's risen because benefits rates benefit are higher. Benefit levels have fallen, David, you the, know that very well, the, and the people we, sitting here the know it very well, no, it they have to yeah. live let on me, it. Let me, so I want to bring, bring someone else into our conversation. Um, well, I think there's a contradiction in what the government is saying. On the one hand, that gentleman over, over there says it's uh, going to benefit the people, the Social Security Benefit Act. But on the next hand, the government are saying that people should go out without food and should sort of cut down on the electricity bills and the gas bills. So that obviously it's a contradiction. Now, I don't know how that gentleman can sit over there, well, like this lady said over here, with a well-paid job. And I can argue that there is not going to be any people that are going to be disadvantaged from this new Social Security what, Benefit. What do other people feel He's about the changes that we've heard right? and, and the examples that we've just been given? What do you feel about the changes? And the, Does anybody have views on what we've been talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, we, I work in an advice centre in Lambeth, and certainly the number of people that have come into us before the changes actually took place was absolutely phenomenal. People who were trying to keep their benefit the same, which is what's happening under the new regulations, at best people will get what's called transitional protection, and at best they'll have the same money this year as they had last, which will go on for the next few years. So each year they're going to have less money in real terms to live on, now, people were so worried about that that they were queuing up outside our doors from half past eight in the morning and we were having to shut half an hour after closing and it was taking all day to deal with those people. I mean, they were waiting four, five, six hours just to be seen to I fill in a form. Them. I was one of them That's waiting from half past ten were. in the morning till ten past four in the afternoon to see where I could get some help, right. seeing that 
before we, we used to get a benefit which, which was taken from the rent. But because he doesn't get a disability allowance or a yeah. mobility allowance, it's finished, it's gone the off the rent, okay. my rent's gone sky high, it's gone up. Where I think the off? point is that with this transitional protection at best keeps money the same and out of that same money people now have to pay things like water. The transitional protection means that it, at the moment a, those who are going through events here, Louise, are going to have it protected at least it for the time being. It means their money before oh, April the 11th will be the same as it was after April the 11th. What they don't okay. point out is that out of that same money they have to now pay water rates which they never had right. to pay before okay. and 20% of their general rates. I want rate. people's yeah. attitudes, the reaction to the, the loser's stories we've heard so far. I just want to ask the gentleman in the front, what you meant by David, a... David. David? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. David, okay. I just wanted to ask what you meant by a well-designed system. Well, I meant a system that was simpler, that was easier to administer... For who? For who? That was simpler, that was... Hang on, hang on. He's answering the question. David. It was simpler for the people, hard-pressed officials in social security offices to administer, that was easier for people claiming benefit to understand, that met its purposes of helping people in greatest need without all the complications and the complexities we had in the old system. And can I make one other point, that on, on this prote transitional protection, that in, in the old days, when we used to have inflation at 20% or 25%, by the end of the year, people's incomes from benefits had fallen by a quarter because prices had risen so much. When you have lower rates of inflation, that means that people are not losing out because their benefits are retaining their value. Uh, what are the other reactions, Robert, quickly? Robert, you have a plethora of complainants here, everybody complaining that they're not getting what they're entitled to. And honestly, there's very few people in here who know anything about poverty at all. You've got to be over 65 to know what poverty was oh, yeah, and yeah. brought up oh, in, the, in the slums oh, of London. Oh, I don't, I, think, and the hey, bishop. Charlie, I don't think you're right there. Oh. I know a bit about poverty, you and I'm not 65, and I was brought up in the like slums. I, don't think, I want to know, but I want to know, oh, is there yeah. anybody else here who knows about poverty? Anybody else? Look at their hands. Yes, look, come on, tell me about it, look. No, I'm talking no, about real poverty. Real poverty. You look well for poverty hang on, then. Hang on, you've asked the question. At the moment, an I'm on about the old age pensioners, 80 and 90. They, are, they have seen poverty now today since the 11th of April. They can't buy nothing, their pension and their um, benefits are cut down. They can't buy food, they can't even pay for electricity, they're fighting to put the fire on, they're fighting to put heating on. And when you go in, they're sitting in the cold, they're tied up in uh, blankets and things like that, and they're 90 years of age. And she's, a, why should it strike the old age pensioners? And the disabled people, and the Robert, children of school, me. Why, why should it, David? We why are should it, Professor? Age, why should, why should, are these cuts necessary? I think they're necessary. And, and helpful. Why? I think that what we've been talking... Uh, let, let him answer, he'll tell you for why. I think what we've been talking... Thank you. <laughs> oh, very well. She said, she said we'll, 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 kill, we'll kill her off. In part, what we've been talking about just now is the fact that there are some people, a much smaller number than those who are getting benefits from the welfare state, who are in real and severe poverty. And it's important that, that help is directed towards those. I would be a little more radical than David on this. I think if we want to help those people effectively, we may have to take more money away from the benefit oh system. Oh the Do purpose it. is to help those who are genuinely poor. So what you're saying we have a dependency or an element of a dependency culture? I believe that yes, we have. Robert, yes. Hang on. Yes, hang on. Uh, hang yes, on. I did. I mean, I, I'm from the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Warsaw in the West Midlands. Now, certainly the evidence that we have from uh, many of our industrial members and also working on the sharp end um, as, a, as a provider of mainstream training programs is that is very much the case. Um, I think we appreciate that there's a need for a, a welfare state and a support structure, but it needs to be more finely tuned. And um, what we're finding is that there are quite clearly many, many jobs available at the moment, but equally there are many people at the moment who do not wish to enter the, the labour force. They do not wish to come back to work. It is much easier to be dependent and to, be, and to stay on the state, the state and to retain benefits. And I think that is a dependent society. I think there's another aspect to this as well, despite the monetary side of it, that when you've been living on supplementary benefits for a number of years, you also come into poverty of spirit and that people do not have the confidence Absolutely. to go back into the workforce. It destroys their hope, it destroys their self-confidence. You get to the state where you can't go outside the front door after a number of years of, of living on supplementary benefit. You feel like a second-class citizen. Shiona, Shiona, Shiona. 
Yes, I'm quite enjoying hearing the rabble. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned poverty. I've been so poor that I couldn't bury a, a child that, of mine that died. I know poverty. But I'm amazed at everybody's viewpoint that we, as a, as a country, the government, owe anybody anything. I have been on supplementary benefit, and I was damn grateful for it. Damn grateful. I didn't think anybody owed me anything or I was due anything. And then the lady, let me talk, please. Let me talk. Hang on, she's talking. Yeah, go on, Shirley. I have uh, a successful business. I employ people. I'm very happy in my work. And I don't think anybody helped me do that, except I did it myself. There's no reason for anybody not to get their act together. Now, just let me finish, please, before you all hack at me. Oh, you finish, yes. Go on, carry on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, I'll, I'll take, I'll take these two ladies in, in question. Now, this one, is what I mean, the, the, the little about boy. And Catherine, yes, no, no, this oh, lady here oh, with the Linda boy. Linda. Now, boy, I'm yeah. not saying that how that Social Security man handled that situation was, was very proper, but I do not think there was anything wrong with motive. Mm. Could I also mention? Let, let me finish, please. Let me finish. The motive was if he could save, up. if the government could save any money and it was a just cause that you did not need these helpers then that money could go to this lady who needs the heating, right? <laughs> now, apart from anything else, if I was in a position, I would love to put all these unemployed people to work mm -hmm. doing these things instead of you that. having to pay <laughs> for two <laughs> helpers with <laughs> your children. <laughs> Take somebody who's getting unemployment money, send them along to help them with your children. Could I also mention it's a very naive, the, it's a very uh, naive I think viewpoint. Linda's got to answer now. Please, the, the problem of single payments, they've now been abolished. Now, I have a, a very a active and enthusiastic incoordinate brain injured child. When single payments were still in force, he knocked the top bit of the lavatory down onto the bottom bit of the lavatory, smashing the lavatory and it was not usable. I could immediately put my hand on the phone and get a plumber. I had to have a lavatory for my two children and my two volunteers and myself. With the abolition of single payments, I'm not entitled to do that. What do I do? Use a can? I'm, what, I'm what making, do I do? Like well, I'm making a viewpoint. I'm making a viewpoint on principle. And f take you for example. Mm. You should be damn lucky you're getting ninety pound a week. Listen, oh, no. I tell you something? <laughs> I was very Listen, lucky and very I grateful to get mine. through no fault of my own. I well, you should be even more grateful Listen, then. I had a livelihood Why? before. I've got Why? nothing to thank you for. I'm, let, no, me, let you just finish, finish, if you don't mind. You had your mouth full, let me have mine. I became disabled through no fault of my own. I went into hospital, I had an arthritic hip, I went in for a hip replacement. I was discharged from hospital with vertigo, caused through an antibiotic which was given to me. I've also got a discharging hip sinus, which I didn't have before. I have got osteomyelitis in my spine and in my pelvis. If the operation went wrong, I couldn't sue any doctors because I couldn't get a doctor to back me. Why can't I sue the government? Why shouldn't the but government Malvern, be responsible for taking feel, my, my livelihood away? Do you feel that you are privileged, lucky, as she owner says? No, to I don't. Feel, don't. I don't. Do I help? Why I should I I want to ask other people, do you feel we're part of a dependency the likes of you, culture? Where did you get your money to no, start well, with this? I'll let you have your mouth full. Hard work. Go on. The problem is the benefit system itself. That is the problem. It is yeah, yeah. a disincentive. Now, for example, the state determines how much money you get, both in living and housing benefits, and if you're entitled to it. If you as an individual take any initiative to go out and earn some money, like, for example, if I were to take the initiative to take one day's consultancy and earn £100, all I would be able to keep out of that was £5 disregard. Exactly. That's what you've got to change. It's and the only way you'll do it is by inter uh, introducing the system of basic income, where the, the, the benefit is facilitative, not penalising. Okay. I want to yeah. views on, have we, what I'm asking, have we created a system where people are dependent upon the yes. state and, what, yes. and you're saying yes? Absolutely. Well, yes, we have, in a, uh, actually, but I don't want to speak as an individual. I think one should speak for the whole class of invalids and the disabled. My daughter was struck down at 38 with multiple sclerosis. She was younger than you. She, was a, she is a beautiful young woman. She would give anything to go out and get to work. Yeah. She'd yeah. love it. She's yeah. lost her car, her job. And what's more, this new business, I mean, they say, 
these, these clever young politicians, they sit on the television and they say, no, there's no cuts. It's the same amount of cash, but it has Rubbish. been cut. Has the been. individual, the invalidity benefit is not going up with the cost of living until the 1990s. Is that not a cut? It's a cut. We do, we in real do, terms, it's a in cut. Real terms, it's we a we cut. do live in a dependent society. It was uh, uh, years uh, this, this thing that the government have put out about how to don't go um, don't go shopping well, that, when you're what hungry. I meant, no, what Hang I, on. Can I ask you? Yes. No, wait, can, it's a diff what I meant was really something quite different. Do we have a lot of people now who have grown up? with this idea that yes, they, we have a the dependent state culture. We do. We do indeed. We do have a dependent well, culture. Well, then in that case... What a, you, in that you, case no, not, a, not at all. Anybody over 65 here knows what real poverty was years ago, and we helped ourselves. For instance, if, you, if, you, if a man was out of work years ago, like my husband was years and years ago when I was young, you got 21 shillings a week to keep a family on. And out of that, at least half was rent. And you know it, everybody here over 65 knows it. Mm. If your children hadn't got shoes to their feet or they hadn't got warm clothing, what did you do? You went to the Daily Mail and you had um, great big up and boots and, and rough woolly clothing and oh, you, you were glad of it. But you have now, you are a dependent society. I had Pe Daily Mail boots. Yes, exactly. And cardboard in the exactly. holes in the bottom. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. But that doesn't, mean, that doesn't it, mean to say it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. But do you find anybody now who is doing that? Well, should, should they? Yeah. Should they? Yeah. 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 Should they? Yeah. I'm coming around there. Yeah. I'm coming around. Because, because I don't, are we, are you actually saying we want that? We no, want to go back to Daily Mail that. boots no, and charity no, of and putting we cardboard want, in your We shoes. don't want to do that. But this, this pamphlet that the government have put out now about uh, putting a um, tinfoil under your bed, etc., and putting the lids on saucepans, it's what every prudent housewife yes. has been doing for yeah, years yeah, and yeah. years yeah. and years. And, and, the, and that, that the one sentence one that you put in, advice. that one sentence Hang that on you on. put in, about don't don't go shopping when you're hungry. I myself have seen that in slimming magazines. It is it is basic advice to people who are are on diet. Okay. okay. You want to go on, uh, diet, uh, make go on the social security? Yeah. yeah. Why do you say that? What do you mean? What do you mean? Because you I mean? can't afford to eat half the time. I've gone hungry. I've got holes in my Wellington boots that I can't afford to have repaired. So it's not going back to the 19th. No, it's here. No, I've boots. suffered it. I can't afford to have the heating on half the time in winter. I finished up with arthritis in my spine. I know I look all right. I look well dressed. It's because of the way I economise. In winter, I use all my money for my heating and lighting. And what I save in summer, I go out and I go to a shop and I say, "Will you save me that dress or that coat?" and I will pay you X amount each week, and I have to do yeah, without. Yeah, yeah. I want to work, but like that man said over there, if you try to earn more than £5 a week, it's taken off you. That's under 60. If I was turned 60, I could go out and earn £50 and not have to declare a halfpenny. God bless the pensioners, I agree with them. They need every halfpenny. Okay. Robert, OK, OK. Robert, this is your poor. This is your poor. Well, I'm poor too. We are pensioners. I only have a pension. I go to work once a week. Luckily, my employer pays me for that one day, and I do not have supplementary benefit. I haven't had any new clothes for years. But you see, Chris, I, just a minute, I'm talking. Hang on, hang on. There's no God, need to. Hey, hang on. You don't have to take that out no. with the lady. Why not? We're all getting a bit overexcited, but we don't have to. I'm go fairly out. well dressed. Come on, come on. Let, let him finish. Let him finish. Finish. Yes, I, I get my clothes from jumble sales. I always have. I know, let's leave it there. Chris, 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 Chris we're talking about a dependency cult. We're talking about a dependency culture and whether or not people are now encouraged for whatever reason to become dependent upon the state. But do we also have, as, as, as seems to be evidenced by what certain people have said, a growth in the number of the poor? Oh yes, very clearly. On the government's own figures, the numbers of poor have increased by about 50%. And we're talking about 16 million people now living in poverty or on its margins. And I do mean, for many of those people, very real poverty, as we've, we've heard here. Not sufficient to heat their homes, not sufficient for proper clothing for the children. And I'll tell you what creates dependency, Robert. It's actually having a situation where people who want to work do not have the jobs. It's for people like Raymond, who works very hard in a job for low wages, and is forced to depend on family credit on a top-up. And under the new system, it's the dependency which forces people to depend on loan sharks, to depend on charities, to depend on voluntary contributions from Why others. Why are we doing that? That is David? the dependency. Why are we creating... Gr in this, 
affluent society where we can give massive tax cuts to the rich, to you and I, and people on our incomes, why are we creating a group of people in this dire poverty? Is it necessary? Sim simple, answer, simple answer is first that we aren't. His argument says his arguments oh, always oh, are based on completely ludicrous concepts of poverty. By his definition, oh, there are the more... They're the government's own his, figures, They're David. not at all. They're on your the government's definition, figures. They're by David's your figures. definition, there'd be more people poor in England than well, in Egypt. Well, literally, it's purely relative. Whether or not there are, whether or not there are more poor... Well, and whether and or not, not alters his argument or, altogether. Well, of course, but, but, is it, but, but, but leaving that to one side for a moment, important as it is, is the, what is equally important, or more in many ways, is the gap between the, the richer or the more affluent and the poor widening. Well, that's, that, that's your view and you're entitled I don't, no, to I'm it. asking you a question. No, no, you said what's more important. Now, it's different well, is, is, from is poverty. There a gap? It's okay. different. Of course, there's always a gap. Is it widening? in a communist is it, egalitarian is it, society. Is it widening? Is it widening? It's, is it widening? It is not on, widening. Hang on. It's, it's not, not widening. widening. And the fact is that the assumption here is, a, is an egalitarian assumption which would create more poor. It's about fairness. What we need is an it's assumption about fairness. What which sort is of society, always controlled. What sort of society do we want to live in? Robert. Robert. I, I'm delighted to hear of people Robert. like Shona who've done an enormous amount for herself and one can only applaud people who uh, pull themselves up from the situation mm -hmm. she's described. But one would hope, I would hope, that as the society that we're in gets more prosperous and uh, the government is telling us that it is, that people like Shona, David Willits, Professor Marsland and others like them would not have more, myself. not to say myself, would have more generosity of spirit towards yeah. those who cannot do that for themselves yeah. and are disadvantaged yeah. by the system. Victor, Victor, is it in your experience, are there, first of all, are there more poor, are they more desperate? Is the gap between the rich and the poor widely? Without a doubt. Two different things. In my, I'm Bishop in East London and I cover Tower Hamlets and Hackney, uh, Islington and then I get upstream to Camden. But there's no question about it, in my experience and in the experience of the priests that I meet constantly, that the gap between the very rich and the very poor, and if you want to, uh, to look at it closely, just go into doctrines, is mm. getting very wide. Is there ever the gaps between the rich and the poor yeah, widening? Do you not, feel that? Yeah. No, 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 I want those who say yes, it is. Is it? Robert, is it? how do you tell a child that, a, that her hunger is purely relative to those that are hungry in Egypt? I live in the real world. I don't live with figures, <coughs> I live with Carly, Karina, Nancy, June, Amy, who are grateful for a baked potato in its jacket, not luxury things like sweets and chocolates and right. cakes. That may happen on a birthday if they're lucky. This is the real world I live in. And the real like world, are we, helped. Victor? Are we having to rely, we're more, upon, we're having to rely more upon charities, are we? Yes. David? I see no harm in using our voluntary attitudes to each other. I was just asked to be more generous in spirit. That's what charity is, yeah. helping. Oh, what? Oh, what? Hang on. I, I wanted to tell way, you, I, I, I can't get way, you all. Hang on, Martin. I actually think the way to handle all this, really, is that there's a perfect place for charity in the scheme of things, but not to replace the state in any large yeah, yeah. form. Yeah. Martin. And Martin. the thing is, we should have, really, yeah, a, Okay, a I want Martin on that. I'm sure. Martin? I think what we've got to realise... What we've got to realise is that state help is second best. It isn't the best. Help from your own family is much better because love comes with it and there's a relationship. Help from the state is anonymous. It's bureaucratic. It is dispiriting, as many people say. It is degrading and that's the way of it. It is not the best. It's the second best. And that is why I believe the government is trying to do something about what they call the dependency trap. You can give it another name if you like. We've heard from many people that if you try and take a job, you only keep the first five pounds and the rest is docked. Now that is a serious problem and the government has tried to address itself to that problem to make sure that you can take home something of your earnings if you, if you earn rather than stay on the phone. Chris, what should we, do, what should we be doing on, about... Just what should, we be, no, I, I, I'm short of time, Chris. What should we be doing? The real question is what sort of society do we want to live in? If we want, to live, if we want to live in a society of private affluence and public squalor, one in which greed is considered to be the most favourable motivation, then maybe what David Willits and some of the others representing the government are saying is where we should be going. I think we need a fairer society. We should have a society in which our children do not go hungry, in which our pensioners do not go cold, and where people have an adequate income, dignity and independence. We're a long way from that and we're getting further. Yeah. There's a long way to go to get towards it. You remember Paul? The man who had the problems with his back and we had the faith healer to try to deal with him. Well, oh yes, he's saying, well, he's not any better, I'm afraid, but at least he's not any worse either. Paul, 
Have a good weekend, and the rest of you too. Take care of yourselves. See you on Monday. Thank you.